folks what's happening what's happening what's happening welcome to another episode of i often wonder yeah, that's us <laughs> that'd be us <laughs> it's your boy welcome on the building you know who that guy is detroit mail the man with the grand master plan for the whole iow network yes sir lex bub is out getting the bag getting that moon uh they they over there still working her like that, a hebrew slave that so, moolala uh, that moolala <laughs> getting that moola <laughs> she getting that money you know she she's doing big things uh but anyway let's get down to business y'all going over to the website www. I often wonder 19.com. That is a website where you can find all the information of anything IOW network related um, from all the platforms of social media that we are on. Um, we are on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, all that. Um, uh, any other platform that you get uh, your podcast at, um, trust me, we are there. <laughs> Just type in I often wonder, it'll pop right up. Of course, on the website, you can go to the Patreon. You can donate, help us get, you know, more equipment so that we continue to, you know, bring you better content, bring you guys better content, because that's what we do. We are content creators. Speaking of content creators, I got my content creator shirt on today. That's part of the merch that you can go get. Right, right, right. I didn't know I, I even changed today. You got changed for uh for the sports show list. Well, I got sports content. Well, right. yeah, yeah. It is what it is. That's, that's <laughs> our that's our other, uh you know, show that we got under right. the IOW network. Uh, uh, platform is the IOW Sports. <laughs> we still got the sports. Yeah, we still got the. <laughs> <laughs> See how that go? See how I go? We be changing that in post too. Look, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's all under the same umbrella. It's right, all right, IOW right. Network. So right. at this point, it don't even damn matter. So, but anyway, um, but most importantly, if you guys haven't yet, go over to your respective app store. Right, right. If you are an iOS Apple user, going over there to your uh, Apple Store. Right, right. If you are a Google Android user, going over to the Google Play Store. Right, right. Download the IOW Network app. We got a lot of great things, a lot of great content on there. Of course, the granddaddy of them all, I Often Wonder podcast uh, that you are currently watching is on there. It is. Um, the IOW Sports Show is on there. Ah, oh, you see the bird <laughs> on the chest? Yeah. You know, we fly, <laughs> fly like an eagle you to know. the sea. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's on there. Um, uh, our good friend uh, L. Jeffrey Moore, right, bringing right. L. J. Presents is mm -hmm, on there. Mm -hmm. um, the Dirty Hills, if you are Dirty wrestling head, shout out to good brother Bove and uh, Kofi Weston. Right, right. If you are a wrestling head, they are on there every Saturday, twelve p.m. Eastern right, right. time. If you like drama podcasts, yeah. we have ours, Paradoxica. Yep, the White Vault. Yep. Man, whatever you like, whatever your heart's desire. Yeah, we got that on there. It should um, be on there. And then, of course, we are definitely music lovers at the IOW Network. So yes. we got plenty of music on there. Plenty. From uh, all kinds of. Plethora. And, a plethora. <laughs> and, 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 and literally, like, at, you know, Mel's been doing a great job being the DJ that he is. He'll come <laughs> up with different kind of themes during lunch hours. Right, right. Um, Like Grunge Mondays, mm -hmm. uh, Hip Hop Fridays, or right. something like that. Right, you know? right. Uh, right. I, I don't Love know. Song did. Wednesdays yeah. and Ooh. um we got Vicky. Don't forget about yeah, Vicky. Yeah, Vicky S. Can't forget the Love Vicky, Love, the Love Cafe. Cafe. 
um, coming out of fr- Singapore. Take out of Singapore. Yeah. Monday through Wednesday, seven a.m. Mm-hmm. to ten a.m. Yeah, she's really she's trying. She's building a nice platform. Yeah, she's building a nice um, platform. So this like if you if you like music and like entertainment, yes. you will love the station. Yes, yeah, so we'll go download the app. But without further ado. Yeah. What we come here for. Oh, we came here to talk music. We came to talk music. Yes. And and anybody who watches our show know we like music, food, and women. Women, food, mm-hmm. music. And in no goes, particular order. That, no, that goes for all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill us. Like that. that is true. We are That's an inside music. joke. If you watch our show, you know what we're yeah, talking yeah, about. You know what we talk about. We all lesbians over right. here. <laughs> Uh, right next to Jordan. Yeah. But um <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, and anyone who watched the show also know that I am an avid listener to Canada Talks. Yep. Cause you will see we had Allison Door on here. Yep. John uh, Door. John Door. Well, he's not on Canada Talks, but, what, but like, well, her, they related. They related. Hell. No. <laughs> same last name. Yeah. Um, Jeff Samet. Yeah, we did have Jeff. Cassandra on here. Yep. And so another show that I listen to a lot uh-huh. is that Eric Alper show. Yeah. And if you saw the intro, you've seen this picture come across. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I was attracted to about his show was he, um, all not all this, he interviews a lot of musicians. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and I, since I love music yeah. and love new music, some of the people, like, oh, I never heard it on me. Oh. Yeah. I want to listen to that. Yeah, let me check them out. Let me check them out. And so I've learned about a I lot of the artists, artists yeah. through his show. Yeah. His show. Yeah. So without further ado, without further ado, we like to bring on Mr. Eric, Eric Alper. <laughs> so you you mentioned women mm-hmm. and food and uh-huh. music. Yes. Uh, there's no food here. There's there's no women here. You're all you're already lying to me. There's, there's none of it. Well, you have the music part, so you know. I got. We all got the music part. That was uh, you guys singing. That's uh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Detroit. Oh, we sing, we Detroit. sing a lot. We sing a lot here. Yeah, we do. Yeah, here we are. I, are, are I'm, you, I'm yep. the guy that can probably make a song out of anything, anything. that gets talked about. Right. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's sorely needed because the music industry doesn't have any songs anymore. So, you know, we, we definitely point. need more music out there for Good sure. Point. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I am originally from Detroit. Yeah, he is. Um, and I'm originally from Kansas, Kansas City, City, Missouri. And I've been to Toronto. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Really? You got my two favorite baseball teams of all time. I was obsessed with George Brett growing up. Oh, wow. Uh, I was, too. Because, <laughs> because of the uh, of where I am in Toronto, uh-huh. Detroit would play there a lot. So I would see, right. like, Ron, Ron LaFour and, and oh, wow. He's going uh, way back. Alan Trammell and yeah. Sweet Lou Whitaker yeah. and Sparky. Right. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> no, no, no! You're wise. That's yeah. what we gonna say. You're yeah. wise. That, yeah. So, um, I've been to Toronto a lot of times. Almost, I tell the story all the time. I moved to Toronto a couple of times. Mm-hmm. So I had this love uh, relationship with Toronto. Yeah. Well, Ontario in general, you know, because yeah. as soon as you cross over the water, you in Ontario from from. Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, right. absolutely. It's like that old Journey song of like South Detroit. It's like, right, really, right. you know, it's Windsor. He's talking about yeah. Windsor, Ontario. Right, right. You know, right. Yeah. I got to tell people, there's no such thing as South Detroit. <laughs> you know, we say Southwest Detroit. No one says South Detroit. So you either talking about Windsor or the Detroit River. Right. One or two. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe he was dropping hints that he dropped some woman in the, in, right. in the river, you know. And Steve Perry is like, "They haven't caught me in fifty years. I got clean on okay. And I keep playing me playing the song at weddings, and no one catches on. That's right. It's, it's like the it's like the Macarena. It's like that's right. such a good song. It's about a woman cheating on two men. Right, wow. right. You know? I need to brush up on my okay. Spanish. Yeah. So this, which is why you can actually, you know, record that song that you were talking about because nobody would care about the lyrics anymore. <laughs> it would be awesome. Hey, you just need a good beat and a hook. Apparently yeah. that's how the that's music all, is working. That's all, right? that's, all, that's all you need today, these days. So yeah. Eric, yeah. yeah. since we have you on here, mm-hmm. what got you into music? Yeah. Um, my grandfather had a bar uh in Toronto that's still standing. It's called Grossman's Tavern. And okay. it, it was um it's in downtown Toronto and it was mm-hmm. the first bar to have a liquor license and okay, nice. this was back in like 1945 and okay. back then the city of toronto 
didn't allow alcohol and music together because they thought it would send the city into hell in a handbasket. <laughs> um, and they were right. I mean, everything had gone down <laughs> to the door. That's into. But I remember as a kid, I really young, like four, five, six, seven, eight years mm -hmm. old, going to the bar and hearing the bands. And, you know, there's a lot of blues artists that played Downchild and Jeff Healy and Rough Trade and right. Amanda Marshall and all these people got, you know, got pretty early starts there. So, but I remember that music was always something really fun, but music to me was always a place of community. It was mm. a place where everybody gathered um, during the day and at night because they had a, they had food. There was like a bar restaurant cafeteria okay. and um, uh, with all these different mixtures of people, all these different ethnic backgrounds, all these different nationalities. Um, because when I was growing up in the seventies as a kid, mm -hmm. it wasn't that far off from when all these draft Dodgers started coming right. into Toronto right, to right. escape the Vietnam war and mm. the Grossman's Tavern was a place where all these draft Dodgers used to go and, mm. and hang out and hide essentially. Um, and so to me, it was, it was a safe Haven. It was a place where, um, where, if you didn't have a family, you can just go down to the local bar and, and go there. Um, and just when I was a kid and, and as a teenager, I saw concerts really early on with my family. Mm -hmm. um, nobody in my family can play an instrument. Still can't. You stick me in a studio. <laughs> I have no idea what to do. I, it, it, it took me about 15 minutes just to like fucking hook up with StreamYard. Like it, it took me forever. <laughs> so, so this, this stuff, you know, if you were to tell me, Hey man, like, your mic level is off. I'm going, well, okay. You know, like <laughs> that sounds really bad. I wonder if it's going to affect the show. Um, <laughs> but I had, a, um, I had a subscription to billboard magazine when I was 12 Okay, and it wasn't just to memorize the chart, which I kind of did cause it was kind of fun, mm -hmm. but it was mostly reading about the history of the music industry and the people around it. These people were like star Wars people to me they were like mm. people from another planet you know when you when when i saw you know the beatles or or chuck berry on the big mm -hmm. screen mm -hmm. i ha would have no idea how to even be a part of that world i just knew right. i wanted to be a part of it but i loved i it's you know, I loved reading about why things were happening the way that they were in the music mm -hmm. industry, what was happening politically, what was happening socially, what was happening mm -hmm. racially, economically, all of those right. things affected right. why a song makes a hit. Yes. It's the people that work in the managers and the booking agents and everybody else. <laughs> but like, why does this song work? today mm -hmm. as opposed to the 10,000 other songs that kind of maybe sound like it. That's what I'm really interested in, Ooh, in like thinking that. about in my mind, you know, mm -hmm. and the more that I can think about that uh, and not go crazy, the more I can try to figure out how to help independent artists and larger bands kind of wade through this absolutely bonkers world of the music industry that we're in right now, that, that there's a lot of tools out there, but just when you think you figured it out, it, it changes. changes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, yeah, mu yeah. The music industry is definitely similar to women. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. When you think you figured it out, it, it, yeah. it changes. changes again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. They constantly, and they constantly <laughs> mumbling at the wrong time. <laughs> We're looking at you, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. <laughs> I, I I just figured out how to change my top twelve friends on MySpace. Like oh, you know wow. what I mean? Like, like, and you two are at the top. You two are at. The I don't top. know. I don't know. It's, it's hard to move Tom out of that top twelve. <laughs> no, it's hard to move him out of there. <laughs> but no, yeah, it, really that's a that's a that's a great lead up to uh, you know the background and your love for music. Of course, mm -hmm. you know you being from Detroit, that's self explanatory. Right. Why you love music, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, um, my great grandfather yep. uh, uh, yeah. in Kansas City, um, Jay McShann. Uh, was, you know, me growing up around him, um, I didn't know how big he was yeah. until uh, you know I saw Grammys on his on his mantle. But I didn't. I was a kid. I didn't right. pay no attention right. to it. And then at his funeral, his his funeral uh, was probably. The most entertaining funeral, which is, uh, you know, oxymoron to say, you know, death and entertaining. <laughs> right. No, because literally it, it, it was like a speakeasy. Mm. And like, yeah. you know, some of his friends that he played because uh, he uh, played with Charlie Parker. Mm -hmm. I named yeah, my dog after him. Yeah. Walter mm -hmm. Brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. 
And so um, his funeral was like literally like a speakeasy. So I'm about 18 by that time when he passed right. away. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, my cousin, she's about the same age as me. She's over there on the trumpet and, you know, mm-hmm. joining. And she's a music teacher now. So right. I have it in the family. I just right. have it, you know tapped into it you know i i tap into cooking first so <laughs> maybe down the line i might tap into you know music and mm-hmm. you know because like in my head i got all kind of music notes going but yeah, i don't know too. how to read music i don't yeah, yeah. i just have I it can't carry gone, a note. Full, gone. No, i can't carry a note but i, I can put you a beat together oh but. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't. But, but, but that's like amazing though like because yeah. mm-hmm. there, there's something about that nature versus nurture of like mm-hmm. if you're growing up in, in that kind of environment where your dad or your mom or your grandparents work in television, mm-hmm. like you tend to want to gravitate of that, or you're so sick of it that you have to go the other way and become right. like a doctor or something right. like that. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I think, you know, we're kind of one of the lucky people that we, we kind of knew what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. At least I, I mean, not necessarily, you know, when you guys were seven, thinking I'm going to start a podcast and they're like, yeah. that's great. What's a podcast? Okay. Right. You know? what the hell is that? But I, I knew because I couldn't play, I just had to figure out how to be a part of it. And, and yeah. um, you know, things like the Sirius XM radio show, it's right. not, it's not a plan. It wasn't nothing, nothing of this was a plan. I just knew I needed to figure out how to be a part of it. And, and um, um, just a lot of hard work and a lot of really great people and a lot of luck and, and, you know the three of us are here talking today. Yeah. Right, well, we'll, right. we'll, we'll kind of take us through that journey. Um, well, hold that thought. It's oh, all time oh, for oh, our commercial oh, break. Oh, oh. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so hold that thought. Hold that thought. <laughs> my name is Dr. Right, Sally Grissom, and I invented time travel. That wasn't oh, my goal, but then one minute I'm in my lab, and the next I'm in the middle of a 1940s military experiment. The Office of Developed Anomalous Resources took my invention and immediately did what shadowy government agencies do turned it into a weapon for the dawning Cold War. I've changed a whole lot of history since then, and I don't think you could say it was all for the better. It's all my new friends and I can do to make sure Odar doesn't tear the fabric of space-time apart at the seams. And if you can hear this, then maybe, just maybe, we didn't fuck it all up. But I wouldn't bet money on it. I'm only happy when it rains. Oh. I'm only happy when it's complicated. No, I know you can't appreciate it. I'm only happy when it rains. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, and we are back. Welcome on in the building, Detroit Mel in the building. We are with our very special guest, Mr. Eric Alper. Right, right. Um, so if you are just now tuning in, you are uh, in for a treat. You are witnessing just the greatest podcast episode of greatest three music lovers ever. Right. And we are just, right. you know, chopping it up and, and just having a good time talking music. But before we went on the break, um, you kind of uh, uh, kind of alluded to uh, your way into making your show on Sirius XM. But kind of kind of go into more details on, on how you ended up in this spot that you are in to tell it, tell the audience more about your journey, Mr. Alper. Yeah. You know, when, uh, when you want to get into the music industry or really enter any, anything, and mm-hmm. you've got that passion and you know, mm-hmm. it's what you want to do. You, it's like oxygen to you and yeah. you just want to surround yourself to it and learn right, and right. work for free. And in music, you can work at a music festival and you can go intern somewhere. So, mm-hmm. um, I, I worked at the campus newspaper at York university in Toronto, then the radio station. And, um, um, and I stunk at both of them. I was I was awful. I mean, I, I had a show at two o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. Nobody was listening. I think I gave away a thousand dollars every hour um, to the first caller, and nobody ever did. Um, but I stunk. But I got to make m- my mistakes there. But although I'm still kind of making mistakes every single day, um, but it's um, join the club. Right. Yeah, exactly. But so I started a record label after graduating, and that nice. turned into a booking agency, and then okay. that turned into a publicity company um, because they all kind of fed off of one another. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I just left the 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 bookings aside and the record label aside and said i i love to do publicity i love to read about music and mm. and i love music media so i just did that and that was back in 1995 and been doing publicity ever since then so really it's been working with 
um, labels like Koch and Entertainment One and a whole okay. bunch of other record labels along the way while I was at Koch because Koch was a record label, a pretty big you know, hip hop, rock, root yeah. record yeah. label. And then we were a distributor. So we would be distributing or they would like everybody that worked there. There was like 50 people there. Their jobs was to help move as many records into the record store as possible. Mm -hmm. And I would be the only one there working with the media to help them move out. So that's where I got to work like Stone's Throw and mm -hmm. um, DJ Khaled and mm -hmm. Smithsonian Bookways and Puna Mayo and, and Concord Records and all these amazing record labels that, that I still listen to and love and I'm completely honored to work with them. So um, a, a lot of the times it's, it's just saying yes to a lot of things and working a lot, a lot. I still do, <laughs> you know, like it's still a seven day a week, 18 hour a day job, but I love mm -hmm. it. You mm -hmm. know? Right. Well, you, you know, it's interesting about music because um, going back to what well, Mar said, you know, he's talking about music because he kind of referred, uh, referenced that kind of from Mo, the Motown sound. Yeah. But, you know, that's more of my parents than it is me. Yeah. You know, I grew up around it because they played it. Yeah. You know, so you, I know about it. Cause, you know, you, you hear stories. When I see my, my mom, I talk about stories about, you know, how she went to school with, you know, some of the artists that you listen to or yeah or if not they lived in the neighborhood yeah. stuff like that so for a lot of us oh that's just stevie that's just so and so you know yeah it wasn't yeah, yeah. like yeah to you he's just stevie one you know everybody like, like oh, stevie! <laughs> stevie! And, and so like you know like i met can I, you see me i met uh, yeah. ron banks in the dramatics you know yeah uh, um I but that stuff is but that stuff is amazing though because you yeah. you kind of take it for granted that these people lived in like near you right and and right. that you can still learn from them like look mm -hmm. like there are people out there who are between the ages of 14 or and 19 years old probably with 7 million followers on TikTok that mm -hmm. are directly influenced by Motown and they have no idea because right, they right. might not be influenced by Motown, but the people that they listen to and mm -hmm. those people that they listen to are, 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 are influenced. Like it's, it's almost like every single black record label mm -hmm. was influenced by the art. There's no, there's no R and B. There's no jazz. There's no blues. There's no, there's nothing like that since 1966 without Motown mm. records. And we're still right. feeling the effects of it today. That's true. That's you true. That's, that's true. Um, so and you didn't talk about music. I know like for me, mm -hmm. you know, I always had music around me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, when I get in my car, I gotta play music. Or yeah. Yeah. you know, even when I was in high school when I study, I had to have some music, music. behind me. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. just like and music just kind of sets the tone, sets the mood. And I tell a lot of people, I remember when I was like real young, there wasn't a a color distinction when it came to music. You know, yeah. we listened to Cindy Lauper, we listened to Duran Duran, and then I turn around and listen to Run DMC. Yeah. Um yeah. Or Michael Franks, you know, go down the line. I could just name different that's, funkadelics. That, that's for both of us, right? You know, it, like, like, right? Yeah. It just didn't matter. Good it music didn't matter. Good it music. just seemed like sometimes, somewhere, I can't really call a date. It was like, oh, that's black music, or that's white music, or that's, that's Latino, that's Latino or, music. It, 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 it yeah. became yeah. this distinction, and I think that takes away from what oh, music yeah. is about. You know, yeah. Now, don't get me, don't get me wrong. I understand. No, the I get origin. It. Cause you know, like some things that we do from our community, we can relate to more because some of the people that are that look like us putting that music out. So some of that because it's storytelling. It's storytelling. Yeah. We can we can relate to it. But at the same time, someone outside our community can still relate because it's good music. Yeah, but you know what though? Mm -hmm. Did you both grow up in Detroit? No, he no. grew up in Kansas City. Yeah, I Kansas grew up in Detroit, right? Oh, okay. yeah. So you're growing up in Kansas City. You've got a completely different, different. musical right. vibe. Like I know people who grew up in New York, mm -hmm. and when I'm growing up in Toronto, which is a mm -hmm. pretty heavy duty multicultural city, mm -hmm. um, you're growing up in Detroit. By the time you've hit 18, mm -hmm. you almost know what the world is like based on music, based right. on listening to the songs, based on mm -hmm. reading mm -hmm. Cindy Lauper's story to Michael Franti to like, mm -hmm. oh my God, probably the message probably told me in six and a half minutes right. more about right. America than it did in any of the books that I read. You're right. But you grow up in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. It's 
it's completely different. Like mm. I'm amazed when I, you know, meeting people like you or people mm. who, who grew up in New York city, I mm. go to New York city and I'm just like, how did you go out at 13? Like, how did you <laughs> go out at night like this and, and get all of these experiences and probably it was the, it was the segregation of, of, by MTV, I mm. think that that did it. That is because a great point. They they wouldn't they wouldn't play anything R and B. I mm -hmm. mean, back then, I mean, right. they called it whatever they did, urban music. Mm -hmm. um, which only up until seven months ago, people were using that term until like last summer. Right. Um, but it it took like Michael Jackson literally and the mm -hmm. record label Epic to like threaten to pull all of their releases off of MTV if they didn't start playing R&B because it was the biggest selling album in the in America and the MTV wouldn't play it because their audience was made up of people in Kansas City, in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. in Dayton, Ohio, right. in in you know Idaho and mm -hmm. all of these places where um imagine you're like 16 years old mm. and the only neighbor you have is from another farm mm. and you put on MTV and fucking Motley Crue comes on the, right. the TV. Mm. It is that, that I get that every single day. And <laughs> when, when you have the iPod that's invented that, for the first time in a generation, right. not ever, but the first time in a generation where people can listen to what they want, however many times they want mm -hmm. through their headphones where they don't have to share it with anybody else. That was different than growing up in high school where those were the jocks. Those were the goths. Right. Those were the stoner kids. Right, right, those right. were the hip hopper. Those were the rock. Nobody mixed. Mm -hmm. And when the iPod came along, I think it's, I think we're, I think it was pretty undervalued still to this day where you, it was okay to listen to Miles Davis mm -hmm. and Cindy Lauper and um, the Bee Gees and Pearl right. Jam. And you can mm -hmm. do that. And now where you, where that fucked things up for the record labels, mm -hmm. but they just didn't know how to sell it certain mm -hmm. things anymore. So they put the tags on that. That's world music. Right, right. You know, now it's called global, but mm -hmm. for a while, anything Irish, Celtic, African, um, mm -hmm. uh, Iranian, anything that mm -hmm. was not from North America was deemed with world music just because they needed to have a place in the record store for it. And look, that was back in the 90s and the 80s. It took us things like the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. It took us like somebody that has a president in Donald Trump to mm -hmm. actually make those changes by people standing up and saying, we're going to be standing up and accounted for the, those tags and those meanings that you put on us don't exist anymore as of right now. And that's where you saw um, a lot of these, um, you know, heavy, heavy duty musicians start to work with, with like, you know, Latin artists and right. Latinx artists to be able to add a little bit more color and a little bit more flavor and a little bit more coolness and hipness. When you start to have all these pop stars having a feature and it's either a hip hop rapper or yeah. it's either somebody yeah. from, from, um, from, from the Latin music world. And that's um, been big lately too. Right. That's yeah. been real big. Um, because, because I, can't, like, I can't remember her name, but the baby who's been uh um, yeah, 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 yeah he's been one of the hottest art artists yeah. in the last two years yeah. he's done a um what a what a, a when you when art. you relate that selena gomez is starting to do a, a latin music album like that's when you know that it's hit <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and through no offense because quite frankly mm -hmm. like that's her background but like you like she would have yeah, never we, done this album three, to three start albums with, in when she no, was doing right, right. Start a career yeah, when she was, right. yeah, when she was hanging out with Justin Bieber. There's no way. Her record label yeah. said, why the fuck are you want to do this? Your, <laughs> yeah, your market right, is right. pop, right? right now right. it's almost like, because, you know, Spotify, you know, uh, YouTube, like those two platforms are completely mm -hmm. changing the way how people around the world are listening. And when you're a record label, you don't care what kind of music it is. You just need people to consume music and you need to sell music. Right, yeah. and, if, and if it's going to be sea shanties, well, God fucking willing, they're going to ram she, <laughs> you know, sea shanties down everybody's throat. But that's right, the way right. the music business has always been, though. Right. And I think, too. Like, Dollars and cents. Right. I think, too, like yeah. music. Like, you know, it, it almost documents times and places in history. You yeah. know, you can you can like you can play a song and you'd be like, Oh, I remember when or yeah, you know, like um God, Can you the, remember the, anything that you learned in high school? I mean, really? 
Right. No, I, but you can remember the lyrics to a song. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, I was wearing a blue shirt and I was wearing right. jeans and I was wearing my right. Nike. Like right there. Right there. I mean, music helps mm -hmm. us remember and it helps us forget. Like it's it's amazing. Right. Mm. So I'm gonna play That's a funny song. You say that. I'm gonna play a song. You you tell me who it is. If you can if you can um, I can name that tune in you can one recognize, you, you better note. recognize that. I got I got in most one note. <laughs> I got most popular songs, so you better recognize it. But tell me your impression of it. Like, does it take you somewhere or personally? You know, personally, how's yeah. it affect? I'm gonna play it. Oh, I like this. Shit right oh, here. this is like amazing. I need a soccer chant. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's it right here. Uh -huh. Where are the white stripes? It's white stripes. No, I'm saying, where are they? Oh, you know. Well, Jack White's still doing his thing. Meg has disappeared off the face of the earth um, by her choice. She just yeah. didn't want to be a part of the machine again. Um, Jack White has to be one of the coolest mofos around. I mean, right. By by the second album, he was already hanging out with the Edge from U two and Jimmy Page from Zeppelin, and, and you knew that he was something special. Um, the 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 fact that they started and fooled everybody, saying that they were brother and sister when they were really a married couple. Um, that's when you knew <laughs> that, that that Jack White was zipping on a different planet. But I, I right. love I love his solo stuff. I love him to death. Um, I, I was kind of secretly hoping that the Detroit Tigers would actually pick him up as a pitcher. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, the guy, him and Eddie Vedder would love to just, you know, be a, a pitcher catcher combo. But yeah, I love that song. All right. Now we're going to take a commercial break. So hold on tight. <laughs> Hello world, my name is L. Jeffrey Moore, and I'm excited to bring to you episode zero of my podcast, LJ Presents, where we'll talk about arts, entertainment, science, politics, and everything else in between. Now, some of you may know me as an actor, filmmaker, and lending my voice to various other podcasts uh, such as Ars Paradoxica and Making Movies is Hard. So I'm starting my own show because I really wanted to talk to fellow artists uh, other than just, you know, filmmakers and actors or what have you. Now, I have a few that I've introduced, uh, interviewed on my show, but I really wanted to broaden that spectrum uh, as well. And in regards to politics, my main intent is to talk about how it relates to us on a local level and most importantly, make it inclusive. In this day and age, I truly believe we have more things in common than not. We are not each other's enemy. And you can catch ALJ Presents here on the IOW Network every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hot sun beating down, but my feet just walk. Yeah, around. yeah, and we are back. We back, we back, we back. Welcome on in the building, Detroit Mail, the man with the great master plan for the IOW network. And what of up, course, though? What up, though? We are with the Eric. great Eric Alper. Alper. And, and man, this conversation. With the iconic hair. <laughs> 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 My hair has its own show on Series X, <laughs> where he interviews other hairs on people's heads. As long as the head is up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time outside. When, Time it, when is this camera on? <laughs> <laughs> but um, that, so that put that was just uh of course Genesis. I never heard of him. you never heard of Genesis? No. Well um it, it, Phil Collins? It, it, trust me, bro. I'm 33. It might be a little bit before. <laughs> it might be it a might little be bit before. It may be. Yeah, but only, only Phil Collins I know. You can call it in the end you know, tonight. You know, <laughs> you know um, what's so, 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 Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> bro, I said, he, I said, man, I said the only, the, the, the only the internet though. But I'm saying the only Phil Collins song is the joint. You know, all right, man. We do you know. what you do. Right. You, <laughs> you never watch Brother Bear as a, as a kid. Oh, Brother Bear or Tarzan. Okay, and that that's a completely different part of Phil Collins. That's a little bit weird to me. Oh well, well yeah, that part. But I'm <laughs> saying, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, so that's funny you related it to me. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> right. Is that like oh, oh Disney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Disney's good for that. <laughs> yes. Disney is good for that. <laughs> so um, I'm going to play something because this reminds me of the era when they had like the pro, I call it the protest era. The protest era? Back in the 90s. So you had. And the people started yelling, bodies started bailing, bullets go fires, and it's up to hell in. It's gotta stop, we don't need all the violence. People don't need violence, people don't need violence. People don't need violence, people don't need violence. We don't need violence, we 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 don't the same game first of all i can't take mc hammer serious on on a on a serious rap <laughs> it's the pants but, but back then you had a lot of collaboration yeah you know you had we all the world you had and then you also had well today's topic self-destruction it really ain't the rap audience is bugging it's one of two suckers ignorant brothers trying to rob and steal from one another you get caught in the mid so to crush that stereotype here's what we did Got ourselves together so that you can unite and fight for what's right. Not negative cause. The way we live is positive. We don't kill our relatives. Uh, Triple brother's life with a knife as his wife cried because he died of trifling death when he left his very last breath. Was I slept? So watch your step. Back in the 60s, our brothers and sisters were hanged. How could you gang bang? I never ever ran from the Ku Klux Klan and I shouldn't have to run from a black man. Yo, here's the situation. Idiotic nonsense violence, not a good policy, therefore, we must ignore, fight and fuss it, heaven's at the door so there'll be no bum rushing, let's get together because we're falling apart, I heard a brother shot another, it broke my heart, I don't understand the difficulty, people, love your brother, treat him as an equal, they call us animal, mm -mm, I don't agree with them, I'll prove it wrong, the right is what you're proving them, take heed before I leave to what I'm saying, or we'll all be on our knees. Yeah, yeah, so, no good. So good, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, KRS One, man, just God, he's he's just, you know, that entertainment line that he thought of, and it was like, you know, I am hip hop, you know, hip hop right. is something that I am, yeah, rap, yeah. you know, rap is something that I do. It blew, blew my little mind, <laughs> you know, and still does. Just right. one of the nicest, kindest people I've ever met in the music industry. You know, KRS One was iconic when it came to hip hop. I mean, you can, I mean, so when I was going through like the, putting this together, I said, you know, self destruction had so many people in there. Yeah. You know, it's, I didn't play Chuck D cause Chuck D's in there. Um, It had D nice in there, Miss Melody in there, uh, just ice. You can go down the line. And, but it's like, so you're trying to choose who is, for lack of a better word, who's more iconic than the other? And it's really hard because he has so many. But the reason why I chose those particular three was notoriety. I figured most people know who those three were. Yeah. Uh, and, not, uh, and their position in their particular genre. So you look at Karis one when it came to black awareness, you know, that kind of uh, uh, what a conscious rap, I guess it wasn't called conscious rap then, Back but then, now no. it's called conscious now rap. Now it's called conscious rap, right? Yeah. You know, Karis One was one you would point to between and him and Chuck, Chuck D. D. It was like those two were like big in that. I chose Kumo D because Kumo D, you know, he was with the Tetris Three, 
he had the, the big thing with him in LL and they kind of battled. But most people my age or older loved Kumo D. Yeah. And, you know? and most people my age and younger know him from Wild Wild West. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, that's, that's another iconic song. It was. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it, you know, not to get off topic, but it's crazy how Will Smith's career has been mm-hmm. with his relationship with music and right. acting. Right. Like, it, it, it uh, bugs out my stick mind. Stick to acting, Will. The world. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last come one. Come on, coming to Miami. I will say, uh, come on, that's, that's, summertime was a jam. Summer, summer, that was the other one he had that time of, when he left and came back. That uh, the dance, the one, you know, it was yeah. switch, switch. That yeah, was that's, switch. That, that was pretty cool. Yeah. He has some yeah. songs that are going to that are going to stand the the, no, the, the test. Now you time. brought Will Smith up. I'm gonna go back to something, but since you brought it up, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna ask Eric this one. Do you remember when he came out with that two? Uh, album, double album. Um, it was one summer. I came. It, it was two albums. No, back then I only had this one. Yeah, it was a double, double album. album. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Hey, I'm not that young. I remember double uh, album. I'm saying, no, I'm saying, but Will Smith's <laughs> double album. Do you remember that one? No. Uh, no. You know what? I I remember that. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm trying to think if there was it, it on CD and and it was like it, it, was it like might have been on songs. Yeah, I think so. Give it might have been on. It might be um. Parents just don't understand. He redid that. Oh, one. okay. Uh, I yeah. think I want. I want the Mike Tyson thing. I want to fight Mike Tyson. I don't that one. I, I think summertime was summertime was on that one yeah, but because a classic. They though. played that mug on repeat because it, it came out in the summertime, bro. They still play I summertime. Like, yeah, so, but, summer. Will Smith. Oh my god, they, 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 song. I, I they must have heard it for. I must have heard that song four times yesterday uh, uh, because <laughs> <laughs> because it's like there's record breaking temperatures like every right. you know yeah, everywhere right. and stuff. But yeah, like Will Smith with like you know Millennium and and Born to Rain and Lost mm-hmm. and Found and like Big Willie style, like you yeah, know. And you're you're I'm talking about, about Cool Mo G. It's like you know for uh, and it goes back to what we were talking about before. It's like it all depends on where you grew up because mm-hmm. you may not have heard or seen Cool Mo D anywhere if mm-hmm. if if you didn't have, you know, um, you, a, a campus university station and you were right. old enough, but mm-hmm. like, you know, Beastie Boys, you know, Rakim, right. you know, right. Tupac, you know, NWA, mm-hmm. you know, Jay-Z, you know, right. all these people that saw Cool Modi and mm-hmm. say, oh my gosh, you can do that. Mm-hmm. And, and at 13, 14, 15 years old, right. all of us were right. like, wow, like, I, we don't even know how he's doing this, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, it, it just, it just traveled down and down and down. And, right. and you know, you want to, you want to feel old. Um, <laughs> they, they just announced today that there's going to be an expanded edition of the Nas record. Oh, wow. Because it, it's Yomatic? 25 yep. years old this right, year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. 25. Right. Yeah. Wow. But last, last but not least, Heavy D. Heavy D. R.I.P. Yeah. I chose him. That's one of the reasons why, because he he's gone on, and Heavy D. If you look at, because we talk about this a lot, and we talk about music, people who kind of came in and changed the industry or did some industry. You know, at that time, he kind of mixed that 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 dance, New Jack Swing mm-hmm. yeah. type with hip hop. He did, yeah. you know. Now yeah. he was, we right, he was, <laughs> what are we gonna do? Too, and he danced. Hey, hey, yeah. heavy, hey, he danced. Hey, heavy got feet, bro. You know I'm saying, and he danced. He had feet, you know? bro. So, <laughs> but, but, but that's but that's where I heard Marley Marl for the first time. It's where right. I heard DJ Premier. Mm-hmm. You know, where I heard about Pete Rock. Like these right. people are never going to leave our conscious because of 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 the people that they associated with and that they connected with right and right and when i look at you know w- when i look at say something like tiktok like i know that there's the community is on there i know it's different i know i'm old i know <laughs> i don't get it but like i don't see that like i see mm-hmm. comedians and i see influencers mm-hmm. and i see people on there but it's like you know where's that community of teddy riley and Marley mm. together, you know, where, right. where are those amazing producers that, that took something from scratch right? rather right. than, rather than just, you know, just lip, lip syncing yeah. and just dancing, you know what I right. mean? Yeah. Now, the one that kind of started it all.
comes a time when we heed a certain call, when the world must come together as one. There are people dying. Oh, when it's time to lend a hand to life, the greatest gift of all. We can't go on pretending day by day that someone, somewhere, will soon make a change. We all a part of. God's great big family, and the truth, you know, love is all we need. We are the world. We are the children. We are the ones who make it brighter than day. Soon it'll start giving. There's a choice we're making. The original Cleo. <laughs> okay, who who on their bingo card had Dion Warwick as a as a Twitter maven right now? Right. Yeah. <laughs> of, of all the people in there, who honestly thought that Dion Warwick would have more followers than right. anybody else combined in that whole I, thing? I was telling Lamar she was the Cleo before Cleo was popular. <laughs> <laughs> See, there was this thing called TV. <laughs> and um no I'm <laughs> but i mean we are it's a long video too oh, oh no it's like i think like 10 minutes it's 17 hours it's 17 hours long yeah no i mean yeah the, where, yeah, the whole video i'm talking about that particular yeah. portion of this show yeah no. but it's a great song it still stands up because you have so many iconic singers in there you know i didn't you get a chance to show huey lewis, huey lewis is on there Daryl Hall, um, who else is on there? Bruce Springsteen, um, Bruce Bob Springsteen, Dylan. Bob Dylan. Hey, I'm saying you know Bob Dylan. <laughs> you know Bob Dylan. Yeah, this is uh, yeah. Somebody, yeah. Somebody wake Bob up. <laughs> Every, everybody but Prince, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, why Prince? Oh, because him and Mike was beefing. Oh, really? I yeah, think they were beefing at the time. Yeah. How can you not have Prince though? You got to put your your differences yeah. aside. All those iconic people, you don't, you gotta put it. Don't have he could have recorded in a different studio, studio just to have them on there. He could have recorded on a different planet from where <laughs> like, <laughs> Prince was at, you know, and just right. beam it down there. But yeah, he, yeah, he could have he, he recorded at the at the Lake yeah. of Minnetonka. <laughs> <laughs> but game since, blouses, since, right? Game <laughs> blouses. <laughs> <laughs> but since you brought Prince up, Prince is another person I think. If you're not a fan of I don't think he gets the props that he does like Michael does. You know, people I know people that's not like Michael Jackson fans, but they he gets props yeah. as Michael Jackson, where Prince is kind of like you're not a fan of him, ah, he's just Prince. But, I'll I'll, yeah. Right, right, I, yeah. I I'll tell you why I think that 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 might be true is mm -hmm. When you have a scandal throughout your entire life that Michael has mm -hmm. in the dozens of them, right. some might be true, some not. I mm -hmm. have no idea. Yeah. Um, you end up with a fan base that is clearly obsessive with making mm. sure that they defend him. Okay. So something clicks psychologically that you better be, if you're willing to defend him over this or that, or see him as a guy who, you know, was sleeping in an oxygen tank or you know right. care, you know had bubbles but it's you know but and you're and you can defend that mm -hmm. you are a defender of michael jackson almost for life right um, prince never really had that prince was just like well he plays the guitar better than anybody on the planet he writes better <laughs> than anybody else he produces he engineers um he plays every instrument on the album and he got to sleep with some of the beauties beautiful oh, men Apollonia. men and women potentially right. on the planet what's to defend him you know i mean we, apollonia we, we, i was in love with <laughs> oh my god just I that see, whole hey look, that, uh, look go ahead go ahead Eric. you can just you can even if you remove the revolution right 
he still put together three amazing legendary bands after that. Facts. Mm. Yeah. Andre it's, Simone. Just, yeah. Just, a, uh, it's just insane. Morris but, Day in the time. You yeah. had Morris Day without Prince. You had Morris Day on this show? No, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 If we did, we make it big time, did it? We have yeah. Morris Day. He'd be hamming up the uh, whole camera. We have Morris Day. <laughs> right, right. right. It's my show. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, we, oh, we, oh. I say without Prince, man, you wouldn't have Morris Day. You wouldn't have Andre Simone. Mm. You know, Apollonia, you wouldn't have Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor. You have the Bangles. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have fun. <laughs> if there was you know, you know that and, and and I posted it on this on Twitter before, like mm -hmm. you know, it, it I, I'm not saying that the world has gone to shit since <laughs> Prince and David Bowie died. Mm -hmm. I forgot about David Bowie, but too. you yeah. know, look at it. Right. So David Bowie is iconic too, man. Oh, god. oh my god. There's you know, uh, there's there is so much music in the vault that they could release a brand new album every single year for the mm -hmm. next century right. and still not get caught up to the amount of music that's in there. Full on album, not just snippets of song that's just right. like, hear the verse. And then mm -hmm. like all of a sudden there's this or 17 different versions of bat dance. It's like <laughs> full on music that would probably be some of the greatest album that anybody else would have ever put out. But Prince couldn't even put it out because his, exactly. like, his record label, his record label like, is, is that how deep his catalog is? Oh man, his catalog is deep. There's, 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 uh, there's at least a couple of thousand hours worth of already finished material in that vault. Here, here's some person too that a lot of people say that about. Different genre though. Yeah. How do you want it? How do you feel? Coming up as a nigga in a cash game, living in a fast lane. I agree. How do you want it? How do you feel? Coming up as a nigga in a cash game, living in a fast lane. I agree. Another way you can't get your hips and push your ass out. Got a nigga wanting it so bad I'm gonna pass out. Wanna dig you, and I can't even lie about it. Wait, Casey just, oh yeah. Right. I would just, you guys should just have a Patreon page. I would actually pay just to watch you two behind the mics. Just do, and you're not allowed to get up. You, you're not allowed to get up. Is it cool to fuck? Right. <laughs> but it's, it's like that, just, just that song alone, when that beat kicks in, yeah. you, can, you can't help but, you can't help but move, man. And I, I think like, what I liked about Tupac, because I, I had a discussion with this with somebody, about Tupac. I said, what you get from Tupac is not just, uh, you know, a song. You get the whole persona. I think you get I think, all the many think, layers of Tupac. I think Tupac yeah. is is a icon because you get a whole persona with Tupac. You know, it's not like, because, you know, you had to do, you can debate a uh, lyrical um, genius or not. You know, some people, well, he's not really a lyricist versus Jay-Z or somebody like that. But or Biggie. I, oh, Biggie. Yeah, they are. You know what I'm saying? But my thing is like Tupac, you get the whole enchilada, as they say, with Tupac. And that's why I really like Tupac. And he used to write poetry, and you can hear it in his music. Mm -hmm. But if I go mention Tupac, I gotta. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Even in your average. I'm a twist cabbage on fixed stick. Niggas don't mix shit. Stick big players. Mighty Troy players. Tim's been the whole again in Brooklyn. Head right. Head right. Day there and night. I've been school since days the under rules. Never lose. Never choose. Biggie, biggie, biggie. Can't you see? <laughs> there was a time when I was working at Koch mm -hmm. where we had the death row catalog and I would be working two box, all eyes on me mm -hmm. and the wiggles. It, oh wow! <laughs> back to back, followed by like Opeth or some like Guar, right? And, and I thought, if if I fuck up the audience for each of these bands, I'm in some serious trouble. Trouble. You know? <laughs> Wait, please don't send the Death Row. Death <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah back, <laughs> back back in mid nineties, you didn't want <laughs> no kind of problem. Right. No shit. Right, exactly. <laughs> and now the Wiggles could very well just do a Snoop Dogg video, and you wouldn't even bat an eyelash. Right, you would right, just right. Be like, of course they, of course they will. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, look when when Snoop Hook, you know, connected with Martha Stewart, that that right. was it. That was it for wow. everybody. It was like all bets are off forevermore in any collaboration whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, 
like um one of the things about me is like you know we just got through playing Tupac, got through playing Biggie, some Biggie, yeah, you know, and I can I can kind of flow with that. But then, you know, I can also go ahead and play some. Sitting in the morning. So oh, okay, okay. Nobody came to see you, Otis. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you can just kind of just sit and just, and this is like mellow. You can just sit and just like, yeah. roll away. If somebody are you, like, are you going to do the ritual at the end? Nah. I, oh. I, might, I, might, I might lose my teeth. <laughs> roll away. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so crazy because you say that, but I think we've had this conversation before. It's mm-hmm. like music can translate your emotions yes. and what you're doing at the time that right. you're hearing right. it. Like if you, you got a bad breakup, music, mm-hmm. you can go to music to mm-hmm. help heal you. Right. If you're feeling happy, because I'm happy, you know, right. you can play some uh, uh, what's it, for, real. for real. For real. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Oh. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. I want you to know yeah. you're my favorite girl. <laughs> I mean, or, it's, or it's, how about? This is um, Volpac. Okay. Sixteen twelve. Okay, I like that. It's kind of funky. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you like. It's a summer, but you need it set. That's why I do that. Sometimes I'm yeah. a little song, so you don't forget it. Sometimes I write a little song. And so, you know, that's what music does. Music just transform you to another time or mm-hmm. place. And it kind of sounds like, you know, corny in a way or, or cliche, but it does. Well, that's corny and cliche to the people that don't understand it. It does, man. Because, like, <laughs> so like people oh, say, no, you, you should never hang out with somebody that doesn't like music or dog. Oh, no. I don't trust people that don't like music. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't, trust, I don't trust people only like one type of genre. Yeah. True. True. Like, that's all you like. That's it. You know, I used to get like sometimes we I get flack around some some people in our community because I listen to other types of music outside. Yeah. Like it, like I played garbage earlier, and they probably be like, "What you playing? What yeah, is that? Oh, uh, oh, I know plenty of people. Like, who the hell that was a white strike? Who right. is that? Yeah, who is that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can play. Well, well. That's Black Pumas. October 33. I've got your number lonely. October 33. I wear it on my soul's back. Like fair, fair, fair. And I'm sorry, Eric. What you about to say? You know, now there's just no excuse, right? Like, because right. you were talking about, <laughs> you know, um, liking one style of music. You mm-hmm. know, it, it's... It, it was hard to to figure out what what you kind of liked and maybe what else was out there. There were a lot mm-hmm. of places that didn't have more than like a hit radio station. Right, right, um, right. Uh, you know, it, it, if you liked, first of all, if you if you heard something on the radio, you had to cross your fingers and hope that the DJ actually named like, the song and the right, person right. singing it. You, there's no fucking Google. Um, <laughs> Or Shazam, and then you right. had to take a bus um, for of uh, save money. Take a mm-hmm. bus, go mm-hmm. down, to, go, go downtown, go to the record store, hope that they would have it, yeah, and then take it home, unwrap it, and play that sucker until you could afford something else. Right. Um. Now there's really no excuse to find out about different cultures and different people and different styles of music because it's the same ten dollars a month for 64 million songs at your fingertips right yeah. right right you know so that it's great so when i'm able to to read about you know that somebody loves to play this song in a dance club because it's northern soul and there's only two copies in the world and one of them sold for sixty thousand dollars that's okay i'm gonna go on youtube and just find it you right, know, right. <laughs> so I never had that because mm-hmm. you know, as much as people can tell from the way that I look right now, I don't really have sixty four thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. um, 
Now, now, Eric, you, you kind of spoke about just how the times have changed with the access to certain mm-hmm. music. So how how, how crazy has, has it been to, to live through through this transition of, of not having access to certain things back Holy in Holy shit, time? man. You're making it sound like I was on the Titanic. <laughs> well, 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 ho- well, 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 hopefully, well, hopefully, hopefully Rose had enough room on the damn, damn door for you. Tell so. me, hey, Eric, tell me about electricity. <laughs> tell me about the first time they. Um, but no, but no, I, I, like, it, to hear, it, I, I like to hear about yeah. things like this because, you know, I, I'm 33. I'm kind of in the middle. Yeah, yeah, you're saying that, bro. You got to rub it in. Well, no, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it's, no, it's, no, for it, sure. It's, it's a great age for right. me, is because. Mm-hmm. I'm in that middle where I'm right, at the end right. of old school mm-hmm. and I'm at yeah. the beginning of new school. Right. So I'm literally smack dab in the middle. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it's interesting. Like if you grew up with, if you grew up with Napster in your mm-hmm. life, yes. or you remember yes. Napster, I think that's almost mm-hmm. year zero for, for the right. way that things are where music as a, as a paid um, consumption completely mm-hmm. changed overnight i um for artists it's really it's it's a big big change right now because your competition when you're an independent artist or people that i work with um your competition isn't another band from detroit or kansas city or mm-hmm. toronto your competition is every single artist in the right. history of the planet because right. going back to it you you know your competition are the beatles and sam cook and um yeah. van morrison good, and good competing with that <laughs> yeah because you know because people would be like look i'll, I'll you know I, if i'm a teenager like i'm gonna listen to modern music for the most part but like mm-hmm. the minute i get stoned i'm you know pink floyd and and right. and tupac and like the death row <laughs> or or you know the chronic and so uh-huh. that that's the big change is like there's a lot of music there's not enough time to listen to it all but right. I see that we all see that with Netflix and bookstores and Amazon where, um, you know, just because you have access to all this music doesn't mean, of course, all of it's going to be good. But mm-hmm. we still need people like you two to kind of guide people and let them know what you're listening to. Because if I like you as people or as mm-hmm. hosts mm-hmm. and you you say that you like this, well, you better believe I'm going to go and check it out. And that's where you and that's where you begin with the rise of the influencer with people right, right. saying, trust me and then trust me here. But people were doing that, reading Rolling Stone and reading Crawdaddy and reading Jazz Times, everything. We're mm-hmm. all looking for sometimes people telling us what we should be listening to because, God, we need help to just kind of sift through everything. So it, it's hard. And in the last 18 months, there's been zero tour dates. There's been no performances right. whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And the way that the music streaming services are paying artists, it's not really that much. They were relying on the live show and selling merchandise and CDs and vinyl records to yeah. at least make a decent living. So that's gone. Who knows when that's going to come back on a regular basis? Cause right. the, back, the backlog is going to be astronomical. All oh, the yes. people that had a place to, you know, that had a show on the books for the last 18 months, mm-hmm. um, you know, it could be almost 2023 until you as an artist may have your first show if you didn't have anything already booked. So I, I think we're seeing a definite shift in, in the way that, that people are finding out about music, the way that people are loving music and the way that right. they're expressing it. I agree. I agree. But so, a great song is always going to be a great song. That's, yeah, that's, that's a great that's point. The right one, there. It's that's the one thing that point. keeps me getting up in the morning. Other than the fact that I, you know, uh, my, I gotta get gotta get the my, fuck out of bed. My, um, no, I was saying mine is the blood that rushes yeah, to it. But is is that good? No, great no, music always no, has to win. Us. It gets me up in the morning. Don't you do <laughs> no, it, sir. Don't, do it. <laughs> don't you do it, sir. I, I know you too damn well. Don't you do it? No, no, don't don't you do it. no. Nope. Okay, okay. No. Nope. No. Nope. See, Eric, you didn't see Jamel's the kind of guy like when you know that he's about to say some wild shit, you got to cut him off right at the <laughs> right at the beginning of it. Like, no, sir, <laughs> and steer him in another direction. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I got a I, I got a question for you, Eric. Is nowadays with so many independent artists that are that are you know able to make their mark in the world, are record labels still necessary? Yeah, if you want, if you play pop music or if you want world domination, you still have to go for the record label, and really? I'll tell you why. Because it's okay. you, you can still you can still get really lucky and go viral on TikTok with with some influencer or you having a dance or making a really great funny video or angry video um, and having the music in the background. But this is the first time in history that 
the consumer are picking songs over artists. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that because you've gone viral or being able to stream a million times once, it doesn't automatically mean that you're going to get it again. And the, the odds oh. are you're probably not. And those odds are getting less and less as time goes on. But if you want to break worldwide in the way that a Sean Mendez and a, and mm -hmm. a like pop smoke or, or whoever it is, you've got to sign with a major label. They, they dominate the music industry still. And even more so than ever before they own each of the major labels of Sony Warner and universal owns 15 and a half percent each of Spotify. That's 46% oh, wow. of all of the playlists minimum are going to be used by those labels. And mm. so you're going to have to be able to push through Olivia Rodrigo does not get three number one songs without a major label. She might've cracked it once, but mm -hmm. I think to continually reach the world, and I'm talking like the UK and Australia and Japan, where she is number one, you need the major label. So there, there's that muscle behind it, the people working radio, the people that will front the money to right. get advertising done. But, you know, this is also the first time in, a, in the last couple of years where there were more independent billboard hot 100 songs on that chart mm -hmm. than major labels so it's slowly cracking but still you know you you need that marketing muscle behind right because uh, you know you hear everybody talking about the i call the the soldier boy um you know technique where he just kind of just did it all on youtube and stuff like that yeah and a lot of people say oh shoot if he can do it then i can do it you yeah. know and try to do it independent outside of the label because cause you hear so many horror stories about you know people signing labels and so yeah well, yeah everybody pretty right. much and i so, mean sooner or later you're, if you're an artist on a major label you're eventually going to sue your label <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know? because those labels aren't designed to help you they're right. designed they help themselves to to make money like yeah. facebook and, mm -hmm. and and spotify they're not really designed to help us find music. They're there to keep us on the site to sell advertising, nothing more and nothing less than mm. data. They're just a data scraping company for the most part. They just wow. happen to use music to get you to do certain things and listen to certain ads so they can make money. If Spotify doesn't get any advertising for the next five years, they go under because the amount of money that they have to spend in order to license these music, um, well, the, uh, they need to do it, you know? Mm. So um, you, yeah, I, I think that it's easier to break without a record, without a major record label. Mm -hmm. But I think it's harder because, again, there's, you know, something like 62 million minutes of YouTube that's being uploaded each and every day. Wow. You know, so the ability to crack through, there's pretty smart people and pretty honest and enthusiastic people who still love music that can help you out. Right. Um, but sometimes, you know, being 16, and crafty and knowing that you can make your friends laugh, chances are you can probably make a lot of millions of people laugh too. Right. You know, right. That's a good point. And you know, we sitting here the whole time. We didn't change our background. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Who, yeah. How did you get in my house? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I, and, and the reason why I asked that about, uh, you know, independent artists, because, um, you know, being from Kansas City, I've seen pretty much Tech Nine's growth. Right. Um, uh, you know, Master P is another one that we talk about a lot mm -hmm. that, that was yeah. able yeah. to right. start it off independent. So, um, and, you know, we got like independent artists on our on our IOW network at mm -hmm. that. You know, I'm like, you know, some of these cats got potential. Right. And which I want to talk to you something about that off air. But go ahead. No, because, uh, you know, it, and how hard is it for for independent artists to to crack through that that ceiling? Oh, it's an, it's next to impossible. I, I just should be. Mm. Um, the, you know, if you kind of picture like a triangle with like the top 1% of people, that's Drake, The Weeknd, Ariana mm -hmm. Grande, Justin right. Bieber, Ed Sheeran, mm -hmm. the middle part of that triangle is everybody else that's just trying to survive or that they're making what would be the equivalent of mi a minimum wage mm. with desperate, more 
suffering to their mental health and physical health because they're mm. on the road or they're always creating um, and not just songs. Like they have to create funky videos. They have to be on social. They have to be kind. They have to be nice. They have to worry about cancel culture. They have right. to worry about all of these different things that take their toll. Um, but the bottom part of that triangle is just everybody else that seems to have less than 25 streams on Spotify that after your family and friends, nobody else knows who you are. Mm. Um, the major labels used to have the system where for every 10 albums they released, seven would lose money, two would break even, one would pay for all Everything of the else. losses. And mm. you times that by, you know, maybe the 60 artists that are signed each and every year by major labels each. So you're talking about maybe 200, 300 artists that are signed in North America. Um, you know, there's 65,000 songs that are being uploaded on Spotify each and every day. There's 170,000 songs for New Music Friday. They're all independent except for those 300 artists that are on major labels. So, you know, it, it, it's difficult because, you know, like we said in the beginning of the show, like the rules are always changing. And if you don't right, have money right. to kind of ram your music down somebody's throat, unless, you know, even if you think that they would like it, it's certainly easier. I mean, mm -hmm. look, if you're if you're a brand new artist, if you're like a rock band from Detroit, like mm -hmm. for ten dollars, you can go reach a thousand people on Facebook who like the white stripes from Detroit. You right. never had that option. You would have to spend fifteen thousand dollars on a full page ad in Rolling Stone magazine and hope that anybody reads that ad. Right. So it's it's a little bit easier, but I think everything is a little bit more niche. You know, you don't need a million followers right now to make a decent living. You can actually make a a, a decent living with maybe ten thousand or fifteen thousand as long as you continue to make really great music. Right. Consistency. I yeah. like that. I like yeah. that. Well, it's like I want to go on. Yeah. But <laughs> nobody needs I people want to hear but, you. Uh, they don't want to hear me. <laughs> you know, because a lot of different things we can touch on this. So maybe we have to we have to set up something, bring yeah, you back. Yeah, we definitely got to bring you back. Uh, oh, we, I'm I'm in. I mean, it's we, been we, nothing but a pleasure and an honor to talk to you guys. I had I had talk, a lot we, of fun. I, I enjoyed you, man. You know. Um, we love, like I said, we love music, man. We seen talk about music oh, all yeah. day oh, yeah. long. I'm glad, I'm glad you pulled the plug because I was like, we can we be here all night. I still got and, uh, and listen when when this whole when this whole COVID thing is over and the and the the borders open. Mm. Um, let, let's let's meet somewhere. Let's yeah, meet halfway to everybody. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we are oh, we come to Toronto because yeah. we gotta see Allison and yeah. Cassandra and yeah. Jeff and yeah, you guys, you guys, you walk into Sirius XM Canada, everybody will be going, hey! <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we try to um get our network on Sirius FM, so we working on that. We we'll, working we'll, on that. we'll we'll talk after the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, um. It's been, it's been a pleasure, Jeff, it's been, man. I mean, it's been an I, honor to talk to I mean, you guys. Thank you, you so Jeff. much for inviting me. I appreciate that. <laughs> I must be getting sleepy. I ain't yeah. called you somebody else's name. But anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, now, and if that was me, I had something to blame it on. I smoked, so I don't yeah. know. You just you just old and sleepy. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, there's that bus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to put you back in the green room. <laughs> But that was fun, man. That was a good man, show, man. Go great show, show oh, bro. Right. Great I mean, show. Like literally, we we could have went on and on and, man. and on and on. Now, and he'd have brought up food. We we'd have still been going. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, uh, we could have went forever. Right, right, no, right, right. right. Eric Apple, so right. No, that was great to have right. him on. Um, uh, we we forgot to have him plug everything, but uh, could, oh, he gone. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I just put him in the green. I ain't want him to go. <laughs> Let me see if I. I can text him. Go no, ahead. No, it's all right. But um, um, you can you can catch Eric Appler on Sirius XM, the Eric Appler Show. Right. Um, it's called out. that. Oh, it is called that Eric Appler oh, Show. That Eric Appler Show. Alper. Yeah. yeah. Alper. Right. The that. So that. Right. Like that. Right. That there. That there. <laughs> that Eric Appler. So right. Eric E R I C, Alper. A L P E R. Right, right, right. So uh great great a him. great source for music, man. Yes. This man, cause he's bringing up some art. I thought I knew music. Yeah. He's bringing up him like, who is that? <laughs> I'm all Googling like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, okay. My dad, that's to the radio station. You know? <laughs> but yeah, man, great source for music, man. Um, if you like talking about music and everything like that, 
really uh like tune into his show. You got Sirius FM is on 167 on Canada Talks, uh, along with Cassandra and um Allison, yep. uh, Jeff Savage, you know, they have some good shows. Um and they've been a good source, man. You know, we love Allison's like family to us yeah, now. You know, we we didn't da- adopt her. Yeah. Now we about to adopt Eric. You know, I mean, I mean long hair and all. Yeah, <laughs> he, he used to work at Cox Record. So right. It, it, right. K O C H. Right. So it, that's how I'm you saying. say it, not the other. I'm saying, yeah. What you talking about? K O C H. I'm saying. I mean, I don't think I want to work for that record company. No, no. <laughs> like literally, it's been big names big, that, that right, been signed right, to Cox right, Label. Right. Uh, so I mean. Just spell um, it, because every time you say it, it's K- like... K-O-C-H, Cox. Okay. Right. Relax, bro. <laughs> <laughs> See, this, this is when I needed BB. This is when I needed Black Bubble Walters. I know we were talking to, about... Uh, to get this guy over uh, My man. Uh, what's that? My man from the Raiders earlier, so I don't know. Oh, Carl Nassim. Yeah, Carl Nassim. <laughs> you, need to, you, need, you need to come out too, bro? I mean, you know, we still love you. Yeah, I'm going to come out as very heterosexual. <laughs> you know? uh, I'm, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> you might, you might be switching to the sausage. I don't know. Really. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> I like sausage patties. I never eat wings, bro. <laughs> I don't like the way they shape. <laughs> <laughs> See, this fucking with your ass. And she always goes left. And then, you know, then you talk about some liver pudding. It's all dark, and dark like that, too. I'm good. <laughs> Like cannibalism. Yeah. Oh, all right. On that note, I can tell shit's really about to hit the fucking fan. This shit's about to go way left. Right. Uh, you know. So before we get canceled, it's late, it's late. <laughs> before we get canceled. Right. Right. No. But um, uh, everybody, you know, um, kind of check out um Eric's show. Yeah. If you, like I said, if you love listening to music, you that love his show. Eric Albert. Right. Also, you know, IOW Network. Yeah. If you like music, if you like listening to music, listen to IOW Network. If you like talking about it, listen to Eric's show. We add new stuff every single day. Every day we hustling, 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 hustling. hustling, hustling. hustling. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, I um the sports show Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Monday if you, through Friday. Damn, oh. we're on Monday through Friday? No, that's you. Yeah, um, that's me. That's the midnight <laughs> I'm sorry, show. I'm sorry, the midnight show. <laughs> Wild Wild Card. Wild Card Mar. He's but Monday through Friday. Monday through Monday and Thursday, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Is that Friday time. no more? Uh-huh. No, Monday and okay, Thursday. Okay, because it's because I'm on midnight. Yeah, no. Well, technically, Monday through Friday is the midnight show, but I mean, it's technically Tuesday to Saturday, right? Because <laughs> it's at midnight, right, right, right. But I call it Monday through Thursday because I ain't laying my head down, so it's technically Thursday, still Thursday, Monday. Thursday, Monday, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the IOW Sports every Monday and Thursday, oh, four to six p.m. Eastern Standard Eastern Time. Standard Time. Yeah. We do um, the last hour on the radio station, so that's why it's important to get the app. Get the app. So, I guess we got to sign off now because we didn't talk the over an hour. Well, uh, actually, uh, since, over three since, hours. Since 4 p.m. <laughs> right. So, it's time to rest the vocal cords and yeah, I got to finish. Vocal cords. I'm I got to finish. So I got I to gotta eat. Uh, and we got uh, uh, Las Vegas. He about uh, to get, Golden he, Knights. He about to get him some sausage. So, no, sir. <laughs> we need to get off of here. <laughs> Las Vegas. I got hockey that's on. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, Las Vegas, Golden Knights, and Montreal Canadiens. Go uh, Golden Knights. Yeah. Come on, Golden Knights. Let's tie this series tie up. This series Go up. to game seven. And Tampa Bay, go ahead and went on out. Yeah. And then, uh, um, we got uh, uh, um, game three. Uh, Phoenix Suns, uh, and, Phoenix you know, Suns, and, um, and L.A. Clippers, and, and them losers, the, the, the Clippers. Right. They, the they step, getting clipped, the, right? The stepchildren, <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> little <LA>. brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, so right. Yeah, and then I'll probably listen to some music on the way home. So right. definitely for sure. But look, enough talking. Enough talking. Go download the app. Download it. Your respective uh, uh, app store. Right, right. Apple, iOS, you just go to the Apple Store. Right. Google, uh, Android, you just go to Google Play Store. Right. IOW Network app. We are grinding. So go support. We appreciate all the support and love. But most importantly, God willing, to the next episode of I Often Want It's your boy, Wildcard Mar, Detroit Mail, the man with the Grandmaster Plan. We out. Peace. Peace.